Hello everyone, welcome to Best of Us Investors. We as a tribe are gathering in Discord server where we share Carrie's portfolio, Carrie's buy and sells in real time, and we have live discussions every Mondays before the market opens and right after the market closes on Fridays in the Discord server. The stock analysis team also analyzes stocks based on the votes from the tribe members. So hope to see you all in the Discord where the link is listed in the description to join. We would also appreciate if you can subscribe and hit the like button, which will help our stock analysis videos. Now let's get started with our stock for this week. Today we'll be talking about NP Materials, the ticker symbols NP. NP Material engages in the ownership and operation of integrated rare earth mining and processing facilities where it owns and operates the Mountain Pass facility located in California and is the only major rare earth resource in the Western Hemisphere. Being the second largest producer globally of these rare earth metals, second to China, where it produces approximately 15% of the global rare earth content and 100% of the rare earth materials produced in the Western Hemisphere. So the question is, why is rare earth so important or is it even important at all? The ironic thing is that rare earth is actually not that rare, but the process of extracting these rare earth metals, it's a very difficult process process due to the combination of environmental and technical factors. But still, why are these elements important? So out of the 17 different rare earth metals, a number of these materials are a key player in the renewable energy, including solar energy and wind turbines. They are also a major key player or element for electric vehicles, smartphones, smart devices, drones, robots, medical devices, and events technology. So as you can see here, they are a must element for all these high potential growing industries, meaning these sectors cannot grow without these rare earth materials. And again, MP is the only rare earth resource in Northern America. What also makes it even better for MP is that the ore bodies mined in or Mountain Pass has the rare earth concentration of 78 times higher than those regularly found in natural ore bodies. And when I say ores, these are concentration of minerals in the rock that are high enough to be economically extracted for use. So MP is an amazing pick and shovels play. If you believe the sectors above, the renewable energy, electric vehicles, smart devices, drones, robotics, and medical devices have the potential to grow exponentially in the near future. Now, MP is focusing on the rare earth element neodymium presodymium, also known as NDPR, which is a major element for all the industries mentioned above and is in every electric vehicle motors. Now let's talk a little bit about just EV to get a better idea. Only two to five percent of the vehicles are EVs globally as of today. And the current EV market is consuming only 5% of the current NDPR produced. However, it's forecast that in nine years, so about around 2030, this will increase by 10 times, meaning there will be over 50% of NDPR being used only in the EV market. Now, again, that's 10 times more by 2030. And don't forget that this is only talking about one sector among the six to seven industries that NDPR is needed in. So they say that we will not be able to keep up with the global forecasted demand for these rare materials, meaning we will be needing more of these rare earth materials than we are producing. So we definitely need to prepare for the future. And MP Materials is, again, the only company in the Western Hemisphere that can produce these elements. We also have Biden saying that he's targeting for 100% clean energy economy and plans to reach net zero emissions no later than 2050, supporting more EVs and more electric vehicle charging stations, where the only way to do that is to have these rare earth metals for every single electrical motor in EVs produced, which also includes Tesla. Now, this is how I think about MP and is why I have been heavily invested in this company. Now, when the combustion engine vehicle first came out in the late 1800s, it must have been very cool and people must have been saying that, you know, this is going to be the future and no more horses. 
And although there was only 5% globally that owned these combustion engine vehicles at that time, suddenly tons of car companies came out every day, obviously because everyone knew that it will be the future and the automobile will dominate the world. But, but now let's imagine that there was only one oil company in the whole US at that point. Would you not have invested in that company if you can go back to the past. I think I would. So I think there is definitely a boom in the EV market right now. And that's why we are suddenly hearing so much new EV companies that are coming out. And personally, I highly think that MP materials can be thought of as the only oil company that we have in the West Hemisphere for the electric vehicles. Now, the better thing is that back then, oil was not needed in wind turbines, smart devices, drones, robotic, medical devices, and so on. But the, the rare materials from MP is needed in so many exponentially growing industries. So again, I have been invested in MP for quite some time and have no thoughts on selling any of my shares and will happily keep adding more if there is a major dip. For MP materials. So regarding their partnerships, they were partnering with Shanky, which is a company that's also a global rare earth company. And through the partnership, MP is entering China's market through the partnership because MP is basically going to give their rare earths to Shanky and Shanky will go ahead and sell those rare earths in China. So that is their chosen way of selling their products in China through this agreement. They also got a contract from the DOD, which is the Department of Defense and MP was chosen by the Department of Defense for a contract aimed at restoring domestic heavy rare earth production in the United States. So that is basically MP's main goal to restore the supply chain to the United States on rare earths. MP Materials, as said by the Department of Defense, is the only firm capable of providing a fully U.S.-based solution. This is phase one of the DOD effort to reduce U.S. supply chain vulnerabilities by ultimately enabling commercial scale production and operation of a U.S.-based heavy rare earths separation facility, which is MP Materials. And regarding their con, first thing is that their P.E. ratio is very high, 592 P.E ratio. As a matter of fact, all their ratios are pretty high with the PS ratio at 20, forward P is 50, and PEG at 8, and the PEB at 7. And the other thing is that the place where MP operates in California, that's very environmentally regulated. They have to like not cause too much damage to the environment and things like that. And compared to these other Chinese companies that MP is trying to take the supply chain from in China, don't really have much regulations for the environment. New emerging technology for example, nanotechnology that could disrupt the use of modern rare earth elements that MP is mining. And then that may become the use for many of the materials in the world today. And rare earths may just become obsolete with the new technology. MP also relies on Shanky, like I mentioned before, under the agreement where Shanky sells the rare earths from MP to China. And, you know, relations with US and China are not like the greatest. And China has no shortage of rare earth mining companies. And so political instability in China and, and or changes in trade and political relations with China and an increase in shipment costs or anything of that sort, like conflict with China, they could just shut down this agreement and refuse any rare earths from MP. And that could directly impact MP's business. Let's look at the financials from MP. And MP is a new company. It started out as a SPAC. It's a unique company, as Drew has said, based on what they do with rare earth materials. The second largest producer of 15% of the market, and I believe they're the only producer in, in the Northern Hemisphere. So that's kind of cool to have, you know, you're the only one, you really don't have any competitors except for China. Using our, our partners from Seeking Alpha, we went and I looked at earnings estimates. If you look at 2020, sales were about 134 million. Uh, in 2021, they estimate 272 million in sales with a P of 65, earnings per share of 59. 2022, they're looking at 373 million in sales. In 2023, 579 million in sales. So you can see that they're growing, at least by the estimates from Seeking Alpha, and ending up with earnings per share of $1.38. So they have a pretty positive view of MP materials. In, in fact, of their four analysts at Seeking Alpha, uh, four have done up revisions and none have done a down revision. It's a young company again, so you won't have any dividend income. Shares outstanding, about 170.7 million shares outstanding with an enterprise value of about $5.91 billion. And you can kind of figure out a breakup value if they broke up today with, with all their assets. 
that's a, it would bring about uh, $34.6 per share. Uh, so they're trading slightly over that at 36.75. Institutional ownership is about 20%, which is low, but it's a new company. Short interest about 23.6%. percent they have about $1.1 billion in cash with debt of $745 million. Net income margins 37.9 and return on equity is negative 1.78. And over the past 52 weeks, their price performance on their stock is up about 201%. So let's go and look at the under the hood here in their consolidated statement of operations. And this is the six months ending June 2021. They just came out versus 2020. So product sales increased year over year by about 82 million or 160% to 133.1 million for the six months ending June 30th, 2021. The increase was driven by higher REO sales volumes, which increased by about 1,052 metric tons or 6% to 19.6 million metric tons for the six months ending June 30th, 2021. As compared to the prior year period and a higher realized price per metric ton, which increased 132% year over year for the six months ending June 30th, 2021, reflecting higher demand for rarer products. The increase in the REO production volume for the six months ended June 30th, 2021, as compared to the prior year, reflects an improvement in the efficiency of their process operations and a slightly fewer production days. That's a good sign. It's more for, for increase in the cost of, of the sales of the material. So it's up 160%. If we go down and you can see as we go down to the cost of sales from June 30th, 2020 to 2021, you can see 78 million. So total operating costs and expenses is 78.9 million. Whereas in June 30th, 2020, it was 109.7 million. You can look up and see 66 million. That was a non-cash settlement for termination of, a, of an agreement called the DMA. So that's no longer uh, in 20 or 21. So you can go down to the net income in 2021, 43 million, 285 for net income compared to last year's $60 million loss. So base all in all, 24 cents earnings per share versus a negative 90. Uh, and you can see that basically the number of shares has increased due to being a new company and offerings and such. So that's just typical for a company like MT. So if we go to the balance sheet, you can see that cash and cash equivalents has been increased significantly to $1.1 billion of cash and cash receipts. And you can see a lot of that, if you go down a little bit, is due to long-term debt of $673 million that they brought in, okay, which increases your cash. Total assets are greater than total liabilities, which is a plus because they can pay off their short-term debts. The long-term debt that we just talked about has increased, so they took out uh, some long-term debt. Stockholder equity has increased from $853 million to $906 million. So the balance sheet is, is pretty solid for this company, considering how young it is. You can see net income from operations has really increased from $2.2 million a year ago to $47.9 million. So that's good. So they're, they're actually making money off the operations that they can use to run the operations or expand their plants or capabilities. The second area, investing activities, you can see that they spent about $44.6 million on uh, property, plant, and equipment. So they're investing in their company. If you know a little research about MP, they're trying to become a one-stop shop. And so not only do they produce the rare materials, but they produce the end product of magnets, which they can sell directly to customers right now. The Chinese are doing that. So they want to be a one-stop shop all the way through. And so there's going to be a lot of investment in plant materials processes. So that would be expected. The third area, that we're looking at financing activities. So you can see they got about $670 million in financing activities and you can see the long-term debt in there. So their cash and cash equivalents at the end of June was about $1.2 billion. So they have quite a bit of cash on hand. So all in all, not too bad for a company like this. It's like picks and shovel company like Drew has said. If you want to get into MP after you do your own due diligence and certainly we're not financial advisors, current price is about $36.75. I always try to, to use fundamentals to see if it's a company I want to invest in, which MP would probably fit my criteria for investment. And once you decide you want to invest in it, you want to find an entry period. Currently, the price is $36.75. A lot of people use a nine-day simple moving average, which is now at 37.33, so it's below the nine-day. Uh, and it's also above the 50-day simple moving average of 35.27. So, you know, be cognizant of that. If it would go back up and close above the nine-day, that's usually a buy signal for a lot of technical traders. So, so I would just be careful again in dollar cost average in. It's a pretty volatile stock still. It's young, but like Drew said, they're the only ones in North America and it's kind of nice to be uh, the dominating company and they don't really have any competition in their area other than China.